Hey, welcome to Esteban TV. I'm at pushgapradio.com. Pushgapradio.com. Bridging the gap between old school and new school radio. Pushgapradio.com. It's Dallas, baby. Pushgapradio.com. Hamilton Park, Dallas, Fort Worth. Bank of America is testing out no down payment options in black and Hispanic neighborhoods to help first time buyers. At first glance, it seems cool, but. Banks and home builders see that we're heading into a correction, so they're doing whatever they can to get us into these houses that are not selling right now. You know, the market crashed back in 2008 based on the loans that these banks were doing. They were bailed out, and the consumer took the hit. Usually you could pay a couple hundred dollars to buy a home back before 2008. Barack Obama came in after he bailed the banks out, and now you have to put down 3%. Now, right now, housing is at an all-time high, and you'll be heavily leveraged. Recession hits, and you lose your job. Now the banks foreclose on you, and now they own your property. Not saying whether you should do it or not do it, but you should proceed with hella caution. Of course, you know, this is how gentrification happens. And then they're going to sell that asset to the white people who come in and gentrify your neighborhood. Now, you're only able, it's not just for blacks and Hispanics, it's for black and Hispanic communities and neighborhoods all right for a little deeper insight here's mo harvard she's a credit repair specialist and home lender down in houston texas check her out um i just really have a lot to say about this new bank of america first time home buyers program first off this is my opinion okay this is my opinion and anybody who knows me or my family knows that we eat shit live breathe everything real estate finances and credit that that is how i live my life you know there is i'm very very knowledgeable when it comes to real estate finances and budgeting and credit personal and business so what i have to say is that this new bank of america program is a setup for my people to fail and every time I hear somebody say that this program is a great, great idea for home ownership, it makes my skin crawl because you're looking at the now and you're not looking at the looking at the long run. First of all, any loan that says no money down, no credit check, um, all your closing costs cover, blase, blase, blase. It's a red flag that right there lets you know I'm going to text that ass with these high ass interest rates. So, yeah, you're not going to you don't have to pay any money up front, but you're going to pay us back tenfold with these high interest rates. That's the first thing you're going to have a high ass interest rate on an already overpriced house. Then the second red flag is. You can only buy in 50% minority living areas and 50% black or Latino areas. But you don't have to be black or Latino to purchase. That is a huge red flag to me because it's like saying that, you know, white people can buy in your neighborhood, but you can't buy in theirs. That's discrimination. They just said it cute. Um, so that is another red flag right there. I'm from Houston and what if I want to buy in Pearland? What if I want to buy in Sugarland? What if I want to buy in Manville? What if I want to buy in Clear Lake? That's a huge red flag. Huge red flag. Another thing is why roll it out now? Why roll it out when the rates are at, already at its all time high? Why roll it out when the homes are already overpriced? Why roll out this program now when the interest rates are at at its all-time high and when the homes are overpriced again this is a setup for failure when you have a company that offers no down payment no closing costs no upfront fees no upfront monies and things like that no credit check that means that they are going to get you with a higher interest rate so if the rate right now is five percent they're going to get you at five six and a half seven percent and that one 1.5 is a lot on an overall loan they also have terms and conditions on resale and refi they haven't really went into details about it as of yet but why eat something when you can't read the ingredients now why eat something when you can't read the ingredients that's going to go over a lot of people here but anyway it's a setup so let's say they want all they only want you to buy in minority areas the market crashes you, the three hundred thousand dollar house that you purchased under their program is no longer worth three hundred thousand nine is worth two hundred thousand you can't refi you can't sell 
and get your money back. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. It is a setup for failure. To me, they are setting up to try to take back over. They want you to buy in these minority areas with a high rate that's going to eventually become unaffordable when the market crashes. You're going to foreclose and they are going to come back in and buy your home at a foreclosed price. Then it's no PMI. That is another red flag. No PMI. So I just want my people to do their homework. My opinion, I feel like you're better off fixing your credit. I assist with that. Fix your credit, save your money, and buy the traditional way in the area that you see fit. Period. This program has so many red flags. Why would you trust a bank that has always failed minorities? All of a sudden, they want to be nice and help us become homeowners. Uh-uh. They're just going to use you to fail so they can win in the long run. We got to do better. We got to do our research. And we got to think and play it smart. Good luck. And yeah, that is my opinion. Just read the fine print. Be very careful. Tread lightly. They, not here. they, they are never here for you. Trust me. They will never work in your favor as far as us. They won't. Remember that. This is a conversation or a debate, a great debate between me and a Texas developer. Not investor. Well, it's the same thing, but developer. Um, he's talking about building generational wealth. This program is good to build generational wealth. I'm all about building generational wealth. I have a son, three dogs, and a horse. Don't forget two turtles. So I'm all about passing stuff down to them. So I get it. I'm all for it. But here's the question. How are you supposed to build generational wealth when you're going to already start off in the negatives? How are you supposed to build generational wealth when, as of everyone knows, the homes right now are overpriced? Because there's too many home buyers and not enough inventory. So how are you supposed to build generational wealth when the homes are already overpriced? And then, how are you supposed to build generational wealth on top of the homes being overpriced and a high interest rate? Now, again, as I said in my previous video, I heard the, the interest rate is going to be between 7 to 10%. This is what I heard. So, how are you supposed to build generational wealth off of that? You're going to start off underwater. Again, this is targeted. You can only purchase in black and brown areas. So, it's not like they're giving you the option to purchase anywhere. You are limited to areas, which is redlining, but okay, that's a different story. Again... So this is his view. This is my view. Okay. Then the next thing is he say refi. Awesome. Refi is great. But how are you going to refi when you're already upside down? Remember, your interest rate is almost 7, 10% and you're already on an overpriced house. How are you going to refinance that? If the market crashes, and your house is no longer worth 400000 it's worth 300000 How are you going to refinance that? Then his, his problem solve for, for this and how it's going to help is, oh no, don't purchase market price homes, purchase foreclosed homes. Okay, great idea. If it wasn't people like you, like investors coming in, paying cash and overbidding and winning the home over a family who's going FHA or conventional. I've been in this field for a very long time. Ever since COVID, the market has been crazy. And the only people who are buying foreclosed homes are investors. They're flipping it and reselling it. So foreclosures are out because regular citizens never win a bid. What's your next problem solver? Um, so this is part four about me and the new Bank of America first time homebuyers program and um, my opinion. This is my opinion, my freedom of speech. Let me start off, this is my opinion. So this is the great debate between me and the developer. Um, so yes, during the last video, he was talking about building generational wealth, that's fine. Anyway, oh, oh the refi, you won't be able to refi. Then the resale, okay, resale, Resale be very, very hard when you have not gained any equity and when your house is no longer worth what you purchased, okay? Again, the housing market is up right now. The houses are overpriced. So when the market crashes, your house is not going to be worth the 400000 that you pay. It's only going to be worth 
three hundred thousand, and you're still going to be responsible for that four hundred thousand dollar loan. Okay. The next ten point, I got my notes. I got my notes. Okay. So the next thing, there's no PMI. There's no mortgage insurance. I will let you guys do the research that on yourselves. That's another red flag. Why not sure insure the mortgage? Okay. Anyway, next. Why would you trust a bank that was literally sued for $335 million for discriminating towards minorities in home lending? All of a sudden, they want to be nice? Another red flag. You cheated on me before. I ain't going to trust you this time. I don't believe in second chances. I don't. The next. You're giving out loans and rates to people who you already know cannot afford them. You're setting it up for failure. You know credit check, which means somebody with a 400 credit score can come in and purchase a home. No money down. They can have zero in the account. And being a homeowner, it takes money. It takes money. So you're already setting these people up for failure with high interest rates, overpriced home, and then you don't care how much money they have or how responsible they are financially. That's a red flag. That's a red flag. That's a red flag. Ugh. Okay, this part five. Hopefully, this is the final part. So, I'm going to try to talk fast for you guys. Part five. About the first Bank of America First Home Buyers Program and Developer. Let me start off by saying this is my opinion, my freedom of speech, my opinion. Okay. So, in the last video, I stated how this girl, this young lady, not girl, young lady stated how she bought a house in 2010. Amazing. Interest rate 5%. Amazing. She refinanced during COVID when the interest rates were low for 2.75 and took out her equity. Amazing. That sounds great. But let me school you, boo-boo. You purchased the house in 2010 after the 2008 crash. Of course, you're going to get a low, lower price home. Secondly, you bought it at a lower rate. How do you compare that to the overpriced homes now being purchased at a higher rate? That lets me know a lot of people do not understand the details of this program. And this is just the details, the small details that they gave. They haven't even went into deep details as far as exactly how much interest rate is going to be depending on your credit score from 350 to 400 or whatever. This is a small detail. So you can't compare when you already bought a, four, a, a home after the first crash. We're speaking of clients wanting to buy a home before the crash. You know, and this developer is thinking like a developer. He's not thinking like a middle class citizen who just want to buy a home for their family. He's not thinking like that. So like I say, there's only a three people, four, who's going to benefit from this. In the front end before while it's going on is the banks and the realtors. That's why you see a lot of videos on here coming from realtors stating that this is a great program. Because what? They're going to make money off of you when you close. So they don't care what happens at the end. It ain't their business. They made their money off of you. Then you have in the back end developers and investors. When you are no longer to afford your home when the market crashes, they are going to be the ones to come sweep up that home at a foreclosed price. Flip it and make money off of you because you were not able to afford your home. And they come in and get it right from up under you. So whenever you look at these videos and people say oh, it's a great idea, is it coming from somebody who's going to make money off of you? Yes. I do lending in my area. So I'm going to be real with you up front. I do not recommend this program based on my investigation, but do your own homework. I can't tell you what to do, but I want you to do your homework and read the fine print. So why is Bank of America rolling this out now? Interest rates are high as hell right now. You just heard Mo Harvard break it down for you. They're literally taking advantage of minorities still. Them offering this program is another way to prey on minorities and trick us into doing business with them. How? Well, for starters, they're targeting black and Latino communities offering this zero down mortgage, which sounds good to people of color, as they call it. FBA, ADOS. But they're offering this to minorities who lack the proper tools and education regarding how mortgages and loans work. They finna bump your head, fam. Please pay attention. The less you put down, the higher your monthly payment and more interest you'll pay in the long run. Your interest rate going to be high as giraffe booty. Hopefully, they don't put you on an adjustable rate mortgage. The less you put down, the more you need to afford monthly payments. High-ass monthly payments. Perhaps higher than what you're paying now with rent. And the thing about buying a home is the payment should be lower than your rent payment. 
Again, not to mention you can only buy this home in a, in a, in a minority community. So they're making sure they keep us right where the hell they want us to be. Don't let Bank of America play you, fam. Ain't nothing free. You know that. Nothing is free. Again, zero down on a mortgage. Your mortgage payment going to be high as hell. And the area you have to purchase in likely will decline and your home going to lose its value. But you going to still owe us. House burnt down, bump you, pay me. Your mama died, bump you, pay me. Lost your job, bump you, pay me. You still going to own. It's all a trick for you to put money down on that house. You can't afford it once the interest rate goes up or the recession hits or you lose your job. Now here come the white investors in, like uh, Mo Harvard just told you, to take it over and gentrify your community. Do your research. I'm looking to buy a home first of the year, but I have VA. Well, make sure you do your research and get full coverage on the story. Bank of America ain't slick, fam. They don't care. They ain't trying to do nothing but help themselves. They are not trying to help our people. That's a bogus ass loan. Get your credit right. Get your money right. Invest in yourself. Purchase your home in the community you choose with the bank you want to do business with. Don't sell yourself out for no zero mortgage loan that's going to cause you to pay more in interest and higher mortgage payments. PushGapRadios.com. Dallas, baby. And we're out. See you next week. PushGapRadio.com. Hamilton Park, Dallas, Fort Worth.